Welcome to MasteringInLogic.com's Quick Tips, no-nonsense random tips that I think you might find useful. Maybe. In this Quick Tips, I'm going to look at something brand new from Logic, and that's the new selection-based processing. Dot, dot, dot. No idea why it's written like that, but who cares? Let's see if it's worth the update and any good for processing. So the first thing I want to do is very quickly go through the function itself and then give you a few ideas that might help creatively spark your imagination on using this very excellent feature. So to open the selection base window, select an audio region, regions or a highlighted portion of an audio file with the marquee tool. Next, either click the functions button from the drop down menu top right of the arrange page or double click on the region to bring up the wave editor and make sure track is selected, not file. From either drop down menu, then click on selection based processing dot 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 and the processing window will appear. The window and processing area itself is really easy to understand. Starting at the top, you have the channel strip setting menu where you can choose to fill either the A or B plugin columns with different presets. This is a great way to get used to how the selection based processing works. You can highlight either A or B and choose a preset that automatically loads a set group of plugins that you can then use to process an audio file. Of course, if you want to create your own chains, you can do that by simply highlighting either A or B, whichever column you want to work with, and then start loading plugins into the slots. You can load as many plugins as you want. When you get to the bottom, Logic will keep adding a new slot. The AB columns are a great way to, well, AB any chains you create. And from whichever column is highlighted, that's the chain where processing will be applied. The great thing is Logic remembers the chains you set up in a project so you can set two chains up and then apply processing to different tracks within a project. Below the columns are three options. Split the marquee at their borders. In other words, if you're doing selection based processing with the marquee tool, if this box is ticked, it will split the region after processing. If it's not ticked, processing will be applied, but the region won't be split. This is useful if you don't want to split the audio region, or if you do, it means you can then copy and paste that process region elsewhere in a project. Create new take creates a take folder, much like when you loop record. This allows you to choose between the processed and unprocessed signals once you've rendered the file. Add effect tail is really useful. Say you use a delay as part of your processing chain. If this box is not checked, then the tail from the delays will not be part of the rendered file. It will only be as long as the original file itself. You may not want the tail even if you're using delay, but if you do with, say, reverbs and delays, stuff like that, then you're going to want to check this box so that the tail is rendered too and the audio file will end up being much longer. The gain section is a superb addition to this window as it allows you to keep the same gain structure as the original file when processing. If, for example, you're adding distortion with the bit crusher, which will add volume, selecting loudness compensation will ensure the level post processing approximately preserves the RMS value. This reduces the peaks, so be careful if you don't want to squash the part too much. Perhaps overload protection would be a better choice because it simply ensures you don't clip the signal. So the last essential part of the window to look at is the pre-listen button found on the left hand side towards the bottom of the window. It's the little speaker icon. Clicking this allows you to hear what the process part will sound like. There are playback options below the icon, but you're probably fine leaving them in the default position is fine. So that's the window done. What can we do with it? So I'm going to show you a couple of ideas that might give you some food for thought in using this window in the future. You'll come up with far more creative and exciting ideas than me, but this will give you some ideas to get you going. I've used Logic's Apple Loops samples to create a funky slice of music that will hopefully 
be easy on the ear. Check it out. Okay, so let's get to work. I want to add some subtle movement to the hats, nothing too in your face, something interesting on the cymbal fade. The funk guitar needs a bit more interest, and I'm going to do something with the vocal too. Not sure yet, but it's going to be cool, hopefully. Let's get processing. Okay, so I've gone ahead and set up two chains. One's going to be for the hi-hat, the other is going to be for the vocal. I've done this in advance so that you don't have to watch me playing around with this because, of course, for you, it's all about finding out what creative ideas you can come up with by applying different types of plug-in chains. The possibilities are virtually endless. One thing I love about this plugin, though, is when you select pre-listen when you're in playback mode, the track automatically solos, but if you unsolo the track, you can hear what the processing will sound like within the context of the whole mix, which is a brilliant feature because it allows you to decide if the processing is going to sound great with the whole track, not just on the individual track itself. Here you can see I've set up or selected the regions every other bar that is going to be processed by the hats. Check it out. Okay, so all I do now is hit apply and there's my new regions, which I can then copy and paste elsewhere. Let's now move to the A, uh, the B section, sorry, and we're going to do the vocal parts. And I'm going to process this every fourth bar. Okay, so there's the processing there. Let's now move on. Okay, so the next region I'm going to work on is just simply a crash symbol that's been reversed at the end of bar four. I want it to bleed into the next section so that it doesn't end abruptly. So I've created nothing amazing, just some tape delay, bit crusher to make it sort of stand out a bit more and be a little bit more edgy, and some reverb on the end just to give it a bit more width and space. Here's what it sounds like. Okay, nothing crazy, but it's going to do the job. What I must make sure that I do is click Add Effect Tail. I haven't gone nuts with the Bit Crusher, so I'm going to leave Gain unchanged. So, last thing to do is now just simply click Apply. Within seconds, I can create something that would have taken a little bit longer to achieve before. So, the final thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this guitar part here, and I want to do something on the last bar with the marquee tool. I've created a kind of transition at the end, if you like, from going from bar eight back to whatever would go into the next bar. So I've edited the drums down a little bit and I've got my cymbal fade, which I'm gonna leave. I'm not gonna use the one that I had before. And I've also done a little bit of processing with the vocal part too. One thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use split at marquee borders. And you'll see why I'm going to do that in a second, because I want to experiment with adding a fade. So my chain that I've come up with is adding some distortion, phaser, some reverb, and some delay designer, which is rising in pitch. Let's have a listen to the part. Okay, so you can hear what's happening there. Let's apply. Now what happens here is that when you split at the... Uh, split at marquee borders, it adds a crossfade. And I am going to get rid of that because I don't want the crossfade. What I want is to add a fade and see what that's going to sound like with the actual track. Which works okay. So let's have a listen to the whole thing.
Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. And if you like this tutorial, please do like or subscribe, or even check out my site, masteringinlogic.com, where I teach all about the art of mastering and finishing off your tracks. The link's just below the video. Thanks for watching. Happy mixing and mastering. Darren.